Right, I am really sorry. I'm gonna keep talking right up until the the hour is up. I am super sorry, everyone. So let's get down to it. Um, what an annoying thing. Jen was trying to walk me through. YouTube literally would start and then it would just stop me. Um, okay, so <laughs> take a breather because that was extraordinary. I am, my Virgo rising was having a fucking meltdown at that. I'm telling you, that was not fun um, <laughs> at all. Okay, so we're here to talk about, um, yeah, I use Zoom for pretty much everything. So this is, I know how this works pretty well. I don't know what was going on with YouTube. Um, so yeah, you can turn off your camera if you don't want to be seen. You're not going to be seen at all in the recording anyway. Okay. So your chat is up exactly the same way as YouTube live. It's just not on YouTube. And then I'll put the recording up. You're not going to be seen. It's just going to be this face. I've pinned the video so you don't have to worry about being seen. Um, so that's that taken care of. So basically we're going to talk about 2020 and getting your tarot business. Um, kickstarting it, uh, really taking, making the most out of it. Hi everyone. Thank you for being so patient. Um, and making the most out of the year. Um, this can really be, uh, translated or, or put onto any sort of spiritual business. Again, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be tarot, but we're going to have a look at a few things. So hi everyone. So hi. Um, so the first thing I want you all to do is with that pen and paper that I asked you to get is to write down the biggest thing, the biggest reason or to have in your mind, the biggest reason you feel as though you're not where you want to be in your business. So I want you to think about things such as you don't have, you know, if it's, what is the first thing that pops to your head? What is the excuse or the thing, not excuse, because sometimes, you know, shit happens, but what's the thing that happens when you go to, what's the resistance that shows up for you? What is the reason when you're talking to your girlfriends or your friends or your family or colleagues and they're asking how business is going and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you're like, yeah, things are not great because, um, or, my year did not go the way that I wanted it to for my business because, um, because we all, because we all have a thing. Okay. It's, it's all going to be, uh, there's, there's a reason why your year has not gone maybe the way that you have desired it to go for your business. Um, and I have to applaud anyone who's doing this work and starting, um, to uh, starting in this, it is very difficult. Uh, there is a lot of us, it seems to be there's a lot of us out there. Um, you know, our group, Facebook is basically punching us all in the, the private bits by fucking up every algorithm they possibly can to make it extremely difficult for a, a lot of us to make, um, make it ahead. Uh, Victoria, I know that it is recording so maybe it's something on your end because i'm pretty sure everybody else can hear it um so there's no someone has said they have no vision you can share because i can certainly help um so do you mean no vision as in you have no idea how you're going to get there or you simply don't know what you're doing because <laughs> that's a very different that's a one thing to that is another they're different sort of aspects of the same beast um, so I want you to look at the, the fact that you've got this thing that is causing you to not um, be succeeding. So then the next thing, you don't have to like a psychoanalyzer right now. I just want you to, to name, name the beast. And then I want you to think about how you, what you want to do next year. So in 20, if 2020 could be your best wonderful, amazing. Is anybody else having issues not hearing me or is it just Victoria? It's Victoria, it's gotta be something locally on your computer. Everybody else is hearing me. So it's locally on your computer. Maybe your speakers or your wireless headphones are plugged into something. It's um, everyone can, else can hear me. So it's gotta be on your end. Um, so yeah, so if your 2020 could look, you know, if you were like, picturing yourself in this time next year, what would it look like? 
So I want you to think about that. Would that be 20 clients a month? Would that be um, an extra $3,000 a month? It doesn't matter where it's coming from, but just an extra three grand a month or an extra 5,000 or $5,000 a month, or, you know, do you be able to have a bit more flexible time or whatever it may be? Um, that's what I want you to think about, right? And so if some people can throw out a few things that can certainly help with that. And the other thing that um, you can throw out at any time is any of the issues or any questions you have for me while I'm doing this. Because one of the big things about starting fresh in 2020 to having a business that is going to get you at least closer to that $5,000 a month, whatever it may be, is getting exceptionally clear about what is working, what is not working and why it's not working. Because if you try, if you're just going like balls to the wall and just pushing through the entire time without taking stock of what you need to drop, you're just going to be pushing in the same resistance, the same habits, the same setting yourself up for failure, all that kind of stuff in 2020. So there, is, there are a few things that become an issue and I'm going to tackle each one of them. The first one is having unrealistic expectations. Uh, and this is not something, this is something that I find is, is very interesting because you've got people, I, I call, well, Teresa Reed calls them dream vultures and they are out there. They're the type of people who will be like, come and join my coaching thing and you will be making six figures from tarot in three months. Anyone who promises that to you is fucking lying to you. Um, so that's, I'm just being honest. Um, I've been doing this online for six years and it took two years of being really unsure what was going to happen the next month for it to start for me as an independent person running a business to getting everything solid. Um, and when I say solid, things still do this. <laughs> they just kind of not do, they don't do this anymore, right? The, the waves have gotten a little bit smaller. So if your expectations are constantly either being fed by what everybody else is doing, by what you think everybody else is doing, because quite frankly, you have no idea how much money anyone is making at any time. Um, and you have no idea what they're doing behind the scenes and all that kind of stuff. You don't know what their bank account looks like. They could be in severe debt, but everything could be looking really fucking great on Instagram, <laughs> right? There's all those things that are happening. So if you have unrealistic expectations, you are setting yourself up to absolutely fail. And when I do business coaching with people, the first thing that I say to them is, tell me what your expectations are. Like, tell me what you want. Like, because once you start speaking it out to yourself, like I want to be, like I've had clients, I want to be making $10,000 a month. Okay. Let's reverse engineer that. How many readings do you think at your rate, whatever rate it is, do you need to do a month, a week, a day to get X amount of money? that, that, that $10,000. And then very quickly, it becomes very apparent that that is an unrealistic expectation. You actually need to sit and do the reverse engineering of what you desire. And I am not a machine. I cannot, for the love of me, do readings from eight until eight, five days a week, you know, every month I would be, I would have tapped out a long, long time ago. I have, you know, we have, it depends on the way you read, but I'm very ritualistic. I use all of my clairs. I have everything. I show up 100% for my clients. Clearly, I don't use YouTube streaming um, for it, uh, but I can't do it because I've got other things going on and it is a lot of work. You know, if you never mind the fact that if you're doing this work, you, can't, you have to incorporate sick days. What if you get sick, then that, that comes to a grinding halt. What are you going, you know, so there's all that sort of stuff. So if you haven't reverse engineered your goal for your month, what your month, every month you want to make, that's my first little tidbit to you. So for the 33 people who are on the call at the moment, 
is has every has anyone done that? Has anyone sat and gone, I want to make three thousand six hundred dollars a month, and this is exactly how many readings I need to do in a month in order to make that happen, or this is how many sessions I need to book, or this is how many decks I need to sell on Etsy, or this is a, co a combination of all of those things. This is how many parties I have to book. This is, you know, who has actually, so Natalie's done that. Did that help you, Natalie? Joan's done that. Okay, so that's a good thing. If you've been doing that, previous businesses, I haven't done that for this one. Yes, it helps a lot, yeah. It, because you will find a couple of things, either your rates are too low <laughs> or you need to find fucking more clients, right? And, and usually it's like both of those things. Your rates are too low and you need to find some more clients. Um, so that's the first thing that can show up. So that's, I'm giving you guys as quickly as I possibly can because I, um, that's the bloody streaming thing. So you unreal sex to expectations. The second thing that's going to be fucking you up is an ugly goddamn website. If you have an ugly website that has a million pop-ups or it's really difficult to, for people to book or it's a million years old or it's not clear what you do, it, you are screwed. Get something clean, get something functional. It, you are better off to have a shit hot Instagram feed or a really dedicated YouTube channel or a smart as fuck Squarespace website than trying to do everything haphazardly, okay? Focus on something and do it well at first. Um, if you have a bad website, that's gonna, you're, you're literally just fucking yourself up. If you don't have a website, I feel, I honestly believe that you are fucking yourself up too. Because there is a, there is a difference between running your own business and being the face of the business. And by the way, if you haven't figured out, I swear a ton, but um, <laughs> there's a difference between running your own business and, or, you know, working through a shop or working on a psychic hotline or whatever, right? If you are the face of your business and it is gross, then it's hard to manage. People can't find things like you're kind of, you, you really are shooting yourself in the foot. So, you know, it, get some honest opinions on people, you know, <laughs> and if it's, if it's shit, <laughs> maybe rethink your thing. There are people who are doing amazing getting, you can book with Linktree on um, Instagram. You can get people to book directly with you from Instagram. You can book now. They've got shopping features. You can do the same thing on YouTube. You do not need for things to be disgusting. You just want to make sure that there is your personality, that you're reachable and your, your face is like there and you're showing up. That's number two. So the first horseman of your apocalypse of shit is, <laughs> I'm just being so eloquent this evening, is um, unrealistic expectations. So drop those if you've got any and really get spend December getting your stuff together so that you can start the year really well. Second thing is an ugly goddamn website. Um, I hate Wix, to be honest. <laughs> if you've had a good experience with Wix, then that's great. Uh, but just do what works for you. But GoDaddy, all those, GoDaddy is a waste of money. Don't ever, they will try and sell you they're full of shit. You know, go with something that has, um, well, you might've had a really good l lucky experience with things, but um, yeah, I'm much more of like a Wix or a Squarespace is going to be a much better, easier, and I don't even have Squarespace, I have WordPress um, or WordPress or things like that. So that's the one thing. So first one, I'm really sick expectations. Second one, fucking shitty website. Third one, not being consistent. Inconsistency. And inconsistency in every way, shape or form is going to kill you. And what I mean by inconsistency is either you don't show up. So there are some people in here who've known me for, for a very long time and I run groups, I do events and, you know, even though this was a bit of a technical balls up, I show up to my stuff, right? I have consistently got a lot of stuff online to show you that I have been around for a while and I'm very much likely going to be continuing on in the future. I plan to be doing this until I'm like, you know, dead. And then even then I might come back and give people a few tarot readings because I might just be that kind of ghost. Who knows? So consistency, consistency, consistency. What happens a lot of the time 
in the first two years of someone's business, especially, is they have no idea how close they are to finding, finally getting traction, and then they give up or they move on to the next thing that's trending or they switch gears on their clientele and then the trust is gone. So if you have been, if you've been going, I'm doing, um, I've been doing uh, readings, 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 tarot readings, I'm really into this. And then all of a sudden you switch gears and you start to do, I don't know, selling something completely different or it's like a little bit of a left turn. What you're doing is you're confusing your message and you're not consistently showing up for the base of your business. Yes, if you're looking at my business, um, you will see that I've got a lot of different arms. I've got products, I've got subscriptions, I've got uh, my academy, I've got one-on-one sessions, but tarot has always been the bedrock of my business and it will always be the bedrock of my business because it is what I love. I will never deviate from that place of like, that is what I'm here to teach and help people understand their way through life through spirituality and the tarot that's it that's like i'm not i'm not about to start a you know haberdashery business you know does that make sense everyone like like you can't be like i'm into tarot and then all of a sudden it's like people start to trust that you're going to show up for them and then you're like oh fuck well now she's like doing fucking soy candles or bloody malas or fucking, you know what? I'm, and I've seen now, I'm sure I'm not throwing shade and I'm not telling anyone. Like if you've been doing, if you want to expand, expand at a rate that is palatable for people, that it's like a little step, you know, like it's a little step. So it's like, oh, I do tarot readings <laughs> and now I'm going to do tarot readings and rune readings. Now I'm going to make little rune sets for people. You know what I mean? Like the little baby steps sort of like continuously, not fucking like I did tarot and now I'm like painting cars. Like you can't, like, honestly, like I said, I'm just giving you guys the real tea here. It gives your customers whiplash. It gives them whiplash. Like that's all you're doing is just like confusing, confusing people. Juliana had a really good idea for those of you who are not on the live having a tip jar with your free readings. <clears throat> really, really good idea. Stacy's asking, I just started out giving tarot readings at a local metaphysical store to, is allowing me to give free readings to the customer. How often should I offer free readings before I charge? Oh, Stacy, are you being taken advantage of? <laughs> like, why are you giving, is it to get, is it to get exposure? Because Stacy, if you were giving out free readings, I'd be like giving them, I'd, be, I'd hope that you're able to give them promotional information to how to book with you or having a tip jar for yourself or something because if you're just giving, you become, you're doing that that uh, like local meta, metaphysical store work for them if you're not getting paid for that. Stacey, you probably need to message me. I feel like something there is not. You're just starting out. Yeah. Are, they, are you allowed to have a tip jar? Because I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. That just feels a little bit. Uh, go daddy support big game hunting. Ew, gross. So here we go. Go daddy support big game hunting. Oh, geez. That's disgusting. Um, it's really, really gross. Okay, so we talked. Oh, the other thing about consistency. So just. Most of you know me, I have been running Oracle Wednesday for nearly six years. It's exhausting. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. There are some weeks where I'm like, what did I get myself into? But I have been running Oracle Wednesday for nearly six years. I have been sending out a newsletter to my, news, to my people every single Wednesday, pretty much. I probably miss like 2% of the time every single week for six years. I have been posting videos consistently on YouTube for a number of years. I have blog posts that go back years. So with showing up means setting a way to in get that trust going, that track record happening. So choose whatever is really aligned to your talent. Okay. I'm a mouthy attention whore. Like 
I would no problem getting on stage, getting on live things, talking to people. I love it because that's just the performer in me, right? I also took photography at university and I'm a writer. So I'm very lucky that I've got kind of that very, yeah, my talents, my interests, my talents are just aligned to like, and I'm not talking about like, I'm super talented. It's just like the things that I am, happen to be good at support a lot of what I do for a brand, right? What I do for my business. Don't force yourself to do something that you hate because it all come through. If you hate, if you're shitty at photography, like if everything looks like semi blurred or like, you know, washy or they're just ugly freaking photos, don't put all your eggs into one basket. Um, So I'm just going to let everyone know because um, we've had some people uh, not be able to find it. If don't don't use Instagram as the thing that you're constantly doing, maybe do Instagram TV videos instead, because you're not relying on a single capture. You know, um, if if you if you are a really good blog writer, but you really like doing this, would give make you break out into hives. Don't do videos. Just get really good at writing blog posts and find your local metaphysical magazines. There are a ton of places like you've got um, the, a lot of uh, magazines or blogs that you can maybe guest post at. And there is a way about going about that. Do blog hops to get known. Um, do challenges on social media to get known. Is all, is any of this, hopefully any of this is helping. If you've got questions, by the way, um, you can definitely let me know. But consistency is about getting that trust, right? I'm sure if I asked a question, you would all be, if Jen, if you have a question, um, oh, uh, that there is probably a few names that you can rattle off the top of your head of people that you know in the industry that seem pretty trustworthy, right? And I can do the same thing. I just happen to like know a few of them personally as well now. But even when I started, there were people that were like either, oh, I know that, you know, they've got a, a good back library of things that are happening. They've shown it before. They've got a good track record and they consistently show up for their people. Don't ever underestimate this consistently showing up because that is really, really important. So unrealistic, unrealistic expectations, shitty website, inconsistency. Do what you are good at do it well and do it consistently. Honestly, uh, that is like one of, if I, I just was a bulldog with my, um, I was single mindedly determined to make this work. I had no backup plan. I was on the other side of the, of the world from my everything <laughs> and I was pregnant <laughs> and I hated the muggle job I was in. And I was just like, I have no safety net. I've got nothing and no one but my own self to make this work. And that was good for me because I literally had to show up because failure was just not an option. I'm not saying do that and like create risk for yourself unnecessarily. I thrive in that in, in, in just, um, environment. Not, not everyone does, but I certainly thrive under, uh, under pressure. The other thing I want you to be really careful about is this getting stuck in comparison or what everybody else is doing. So spoiler alert for people, there are a number of people in the industry that I highly fucking admire that I block on social media. And it's only because if I start going down the rabbit hole of what are they doing, it takes the focus away from what I'm doing and what I should be doing and the work I should be going on. I might because it's this insidious, disgusting comparison thing that our shadow just wants to fucking go like right into. And you're just like, why did I do that? You know? So, and I collaborate with a lot of people. Like if you've done my summer school or if you've, you know, and, but I don't follow the, uh, some people on Instagram or I don't check, I don't scroll through Instagram, I'll post and I'll get in my DMs and I'll do things like that. But I won't spend a long time on social media, um, looking at other people's stuff. 
because remembering everyone is just like doing the like everything is fine everything is awesome and we cherry pick right what's happening in our businesses and what's happening in our lives on social media but i tell you right now if i'm having a bad day or if i'm having a day where my like shadow or whatever is coming out you could really talk yourself out of succeeding if you if you like allow yourself down the road of just comparing yourself to what everybody else is doing. So social media can be extremely toxic, but it's also really fucking awesome, but it just has to be the way in which you use it, right? It's like a, it's like a magical power. You've got to really be careful about the intention that you're setting and how much time that you're setting in there and what you're doing. And then you're like, okay. Um, you can't look around anyone else and see how it should be doing. Yeah. You have to know your own boundaries. Absolutely. So I have a little thing on my computer that I used to have when I first started, especially because I would find it debilitating when I used to see how well everybody else was doing. And it literally just said, focus on your own shit. Anytime you feel like, because anytime you feel as though you're not succeeding or you're um, failing or you're not having a good month with sales or you've just said, you know, someone has canceled an appointment or whatever it may be, focus on your own shit because that 25 minutes that you spent going down the rabbit hole of looking at whatever, whoever you idolize or whoever you like or whoever's brand new shiny thing is out and like going down the spiral you could have spent that 25 minutes writing a new blog post or you could have spent 25 minutes setting up a really beautiful photo shoot for, for something to, that you can share. Or you could have spent that 25 minutes um, uh, researching a hashtag on, on, um, on Instagram and finding new clients. You could have spent that 20... You know, there are so many much more healthy... Um, Twitter is just like the worst. I don't even go on there anymore. It's toxic. I hate Twitter, but there is so much more that you can be doing in a creative context. And this is the next thing about, um, what is it called? Comparison. Okay. Is if you, there, if you're doing too much consumption versus creation, you need to knock it off. A beginning, something you can do at the beginning of every day, every week is have your two C's, your CC's in order, consumption and creation. If there's too much consumption happening, you need to cut yourself off. If there's too much binge watching other people's YouTube videos, I literally have 15 videos in my like to watch list and I give myself time slots that I'm allowed to watch it and I turn it off. If I'm doing too much consumption and I'm not creating, all you're doing is putting another one of those walls up for procrastination. So that's another really, really important thing I want you to write down and have like in a little, little, like little post-it note is have I, have I been consuming and not creating or what's my percentage this week or what was my percentage this month? Because I guarantee you that's that small shift for me when I started absolutely fucking turned my business around because I stopped over consuming and I started creating and I've got, you know, four decks now, a book, I've got two more decks that are in the final stages of editing for the guidebook. I just fucking just do the work, right? Like, so that's a big, that was a massive shift for me. And I'm a Gemini, right? Like I get full on like, Oh, shiny things are great. Like I, that, that can totally happen to me. So just, um, that's something that's really, really helpful, um, uh, on that as well. The other thing that I wanted to, I hope this is not going too quickly. I just feel really shit that we lost like 15 minutes. So, um, I want to make sure I'm rapid firing this to you because I know you can watch this again later. The other thing that happens that can happen as well is you're trying to serve everybody. Okay. So if you're trying to, like, I get, this is the other thing. When I was doing a lot of coaching for people and trying to get their business up and running, you're like, so who's your ideal client? Oh, my ideal client is anyone who wants a tarot reading. Yes, queen. I love them. All I and I'm like, well, that doesn't help you. That helps nobody. Anyone who wants a tarot reading. 
because I'm pretty sure like we've all seen on my other my group or tarot nerds or whatever it is you ask for a free reading and honey the floodgates open don't they like you get everyone in their damn chicken leg goldfish wanting a free reading that is not your ideal client it's not your ideal client that's not who you are speaking to if there's the other thing, get very fucking clear on who you want to serve in 2020. Get really clear on what your superpower is and what you can do to, um, to really um, help people. Get very, very specific. Because you might feel as though you're cutting out potential. You're not cutting out potential at all. You're just making it super easy for the people who are going to work with you to find you. Um, narrowing things to a point of like, it's, it's just a really, really good idea. Now, the other, the other side of that is you have to, to run a thin line of like a pretty, it's like a gray area, like a gray Jedi, um, is you can't also just say, this is going to get me a lot of hate. <laughs> You are ready for it? <laughs> Unpopular opinion. Um, you can't say, I had all these notes, so I'm like running through it very, very quickly. You can't say, well, I just want to do tarot readings for people who have done all this work and are really spiritual and are here to like find their life purpose. And I want to, you know, really help them do this. And I don't want to do love readings and I don't want to do, and I'm like, honey. <laughs> May the force be with you. <laughs> like, good, good luck with that because I run a full time tarot business and I answer love questions a lot. Yes, I answer questions about higher purpose and getting businesses going, whatever it is. I'll answer whatever pretty much as long as it's not dodgy. Um, but it's that whole like spiritual highbrowing or looking down your nose. At Am I using the right word for that? Probably. Um, well, Teresa Reed, who's one of my favorite people ever, the tarot lady, um, has this awesome saying as well, because I'm Diane's right, 90% is love and she works on phone lines. People want to know about getting laid and getting paid. That's what they want to know about, getting laid or getting paid. They want to know career stuff, money stuff, what's happening with, I've had, and I've had everything from like estates, getting people fighting about estates to like all sorts of things and then getting laid. So if you want to do a business where all you do is highbrow sort of things, good, good luck. Um, but there isn't, it's not to say that you can't help people on the higher level, but what happens is, we are determining to the client what is important to them at that point, which is really not what we're here for. So if I have a client come back and have the, I have a client, I love love readings, honey. I will answer the question, is he or is she, or are they coming back every day of the week? I love it. It's one of my favorite fucking questions because there's always so much more going on. And that is what is important to your client at that point. That is what they need you for. You are not there to determine what their priorities, what they need to hear, what their heart is longing for, what their pain is, what their story is. You're there to show up and do a reading and serve. So my, when I get that is, um, uh, is that are they coming back? I always answer the question and then I build a little bit more on top of that in a more um, coach way. So it's more like, okay, so are they coming back? Yes, they're going to come back, but then we're going to look at, should you take them back, you know, and build around that? Or um, is there somebody else out there who's better for you than this person when they come crawling back because they realize they fucked up or, you know, so there's a lot more you can do for the client on top of that. But I will always ask them the question of, are they coming back, right? Absolutely. So people are saying like, there's always more going on beneath the surface. And I will offer them that I want to, they may want to know whether they're coming back, but I will also offer them so many more options and opportunities and help them feel like they're so much more empowered than waiting for just 
idiot stick to realize and come come calling back right <clears throat> Uh, Marsh is saying love readings are a gateway for more readings in the same client. And it's super true, right? So that's the other thing. The other thing that might be stopping you is get specific about who you're serving. And that can be the language that can be the, you know, the niche that you're, that's the type of readings that you're doing, but also don't need you like become too specific where you're knocking people back or looking down on them for what they did, what they need. Right. I believe that I'm here to be of service and I'm here to be a service for spirit in a number of ways. And one of those ways is sometimes to really just answer those very muggle questions of, am I getting the job or is the promotion happening or are they coming back? Um, the other, what was my other, what was my other, does anyone have any questions? Cause I realized that we've got another live thing happening. So I don't want to be disrespectful for the next person. Am I the second last person? I think I might be. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, I just, I don't want to like be, oh, okay. So the other thing that I want to just leave you with, um, there's two, two quick things. The other thing is if you ever find yourself in a spot of jealousy or a spot of like, oh shit, like I'm never going to make it, always just say, I thank the universe for showing me what is possible or I thank that person for showing me what is possible. Because people who are paving the way and who are killing it in tarot, in spirituality, are really showing you what is, what is possible, right? It's like how brilliant a time is it that the, the tide can rise and we can all rise together. And with the fact that tarot is becoming so much more mainstream, there is never a time better than to get into tarot now, especially in, the, in your tarot business and um, move forward and find clients. And, you know, honestly, the more it's becoming so popular and ingrained, more and more people are coming to it. There's something like 5 million Google, I did the analytics, five, and this was a couple of years ago, so it's probably even spiked even more. 5 million tarot reading Google searches, how to get to like looking for a tarot reading a month. 5 million. There's not enough of us out there to service that, especially good ones who aren't going to say, you're cursed and you need this and, you know, pay me $200 to relieve lift the curse of you those people so there is it's just about getting really specific so that's um another another thing okay lastly and i'll put this in the notes in the replay and then i'm going to jump off because i do not want to be disrespectful is there's a three card reading for um for next year and it's you pick the first card is pick where your business is and you have to physically go through your tarot deck right and pick the card in your deck that represents you can do it by meaning or you can do it via um, the imagery, pick the way your business is. Then you're going <coughs> to go through the deck again and you're going to pick where you want it to be. So maybe it's at the two of pentacles because life work balance is kind of fucked up at the moment and you want to be at the nine of pentacles because, you know, who doesn't? Or it is you're you're at the two of swords and you really want to be at the six of wands, right? You so you do that. And if you get stuck on any of it, you all know how to get a hold of me on this or the replay or on Facebook. Come connect. And then you're gonna shuffle the rest of the deck. And while you're holding it, you're going to say, "How am I going to get there?" You're gonna pick one card, and that's gonna be the next step. Okay. And then every month, repeat the process. Because it's, it's always a really important thing to just keep checking in, right? And we can use the tarot as a tool to keep checking in. I know I fired a lot at you. I'm so sorry for the technical screw-ups. I don't know what happened to my streaming software. It is literally not working. Um, thank you for bearing with me. At Ethany at Instagram, if you have questions, you know how to get a hold of me. Thank you so much. I feel like such an asshole that it took so long to get on board tonight. So I've got lots of, I've got, I've, if you've got questions, let me know. Um, and uh, on to the next one, everyone. I'll upload this soon. Bye. <laughs>